the whole point of these videos is that you guys can learn from uh, basically my experience or even my mistakes, uh, whatever's going on in this industry. If I share it for you right off the bat, when you come into this industry, or you join this industry, it's not a surprise for you. You know exactly what's going on and that maybe you don't make the same mistakes I make or at least you, you, you manage your expectations, okay? And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about Adessa and Trade Rev specifically, how the customer service is shitty and how they just don't give a fuck about you, okay? If you're not a business person and you, you have that mentality of your customer is always right, and basically uh, you, you think that companies will do whatever it takes uh, to satisfy the customer. In most industries that might be true, but in the automotive industry uh, it's not exactly that way because Adessa, Trade Rev, those companies do not have enough competition. And even if we are their customer technically, well not technically, we are the customer, we're paying them a fuck ton of money all the time. Uh, if we are the customer, you'd think that they would go the extra mile to satisfy us and make sure that we are right. But dealers a dime a dozen. There are dealers every fucking corner, every block. There's new dealers coming up every single year. And uh, the the only resources we have is the same AFC, Next Gear, uh, Trade Rev, and all of those guys. So they do not have as much competition. And that's why they can treat us like shit, okay? So here's an example of what's going on here. Uh, and again, if, if, if you get anything from this, at least you know how to deal with it if you come into a situation like that okay again guys don't forget these videos are sponsored by me so you could go to louisor.ca and grab some wipers uh by between now and december 31st and you're going to get a chance to win 500 bucks it's real it's a great drawer and great odds okay so this is my way of saying thank you and giving back to some of our viewers and some of our customers okay so don't forget to check that out anyway so here's the two scenarios one i remember i posted a video about that mazda 5 it's been months. I've given this useless trade rev uh, countless, countless times to resolve this matter, and it still cannot be resolved. I'm going back and forth with text messages. Um, you know, I'm mad to like just like put his information out here like this, uh, but I'm, I'm I'm gonna hold it in. I'm gonna hold it in and not put his name and his number on here. But the bottom line is, he's a useless sales rep in the sense where the Mazda 5. I bought it a few kilometers away. I made a video. Uh, explaining that where I bought the, the, the Mazda 5, I paid Trade Rev to deliver the car to me. I paid Trade Rev to deliver the car to me and they used their mother company, Adessa Transport, to do the job. Adessa Transport went to pick up the car. They claimed the battery was too weak or uh, it was not drivable. So they sent a tow truck to get the car. Keep in mind, I'm just a few kilometers away from the dealership that I bought the vehicle at, but they chose to tow the car all the way to Brampton, which is the Toronto Adessa location and uh, didn't contact me and I just didn't know where the car was. The car eventually uh, popped up on my schedule saying delivered. And then I'm like, no, it's not. Like, what the fuck is this car? I don't have this car here. Uh, so when I followed up, my so-called trade rev rep said he's gonna open up an investigation. He couldn't find the fucking thing. I gave him time to figure it out. Eventually I found an email showing that Adessa was the one that, you know, uh, picked up the vehicle. So I contact Adessa and the vehicle was sure enough at Adessa, not obviously at my lot. And I had to pay out of pocket to tow this vehicle from Odessa to my location. And the trade rep, rep assured me that he's going to get me a refund for the, the, the tow. Because keep in mind, I already paid for that tow. And I just never got the car. And I had to pay a private tow truck to bring the vehicle to me. Uh, the vehicle was totally drivable. It just needed to boost, by the way. But regardless, so I paid twice for delivery. So not only, it's two ways they could deal with this. It's simple. It's been a minute, it's out of one. They can just refund me the original tow bill that I gave them because I paid them to deliver a car that they did not deliver to me. Or they can refund me uh, the, the tow truck guy that I paid because I have a receipt and proof of that. And you guys caused me to pay another company to deliver a car to me that I paid you to deliver, if that makes any sense to you guys, okay? The point is I paid twice for it, refund me one of those tow bills because I paid you for a job you did not complete. So that's one scenario that we keep going over back and forth. And every single time I reach out to the rep, he just keep telling me he's working on it. I don't know how long it takes to say that we double charge this customer. So let's just give him one of the fucking uh, tow bills back, right? I don't, I don't get why it's taking so long. Other than they're a big company and us small dealers are nobody to them. Uh, so, you know, you get pushed around and that's just the way it is. The second scenario is my GTI that is screwed up. Remember, I made this video uh, getting this GTI out of Quebec. 
I, I spoke to the Quebec dealer. He assured me that when Odessa Transport, once again, I bought it with Trade Rev and Odessa Transport was the, the trucking company to pick it up. When, when he gave the car to um, Odessa Transport, he said the, the, the bottom lip or skirt was there and there was no bumper damage. So now I, I waited so long for a, a decision on that. Uh, Trade Rev asked me to go to an independent shop and get an estimate, which I did. And they gave me an estimate of just a little over $1,000 because the edge of the bumper, the clips that's supposed to clip in, was broken. So uh, you can't like just snap it back in. The bumper needs to be replaced and painted and uh, the uh, skirt slash lip uh, need to be replaced. So after Trade Rev came back, they said that they are going to pay or they're willing to pay for the skirt, which is about 250. So they're willing to give me the money to pay for the skirt but they're not paying to install it. They're not paying to fix the bumper. And the logic and the reason behind it is they're using the $750 rule. So what is that? In case you are new to buying cars at auction, you need to understand. If you are selling a car as a dealer and you're supposed to make all of your disclosures, meaning if you see the engine lights on and you think that there's a mechanical problem, uh, you're supposed to put the disclosure in uh, engine light on or mechanical issue repairs over 750. So 750 is that threshold, that sweet spot. So if you did not disclose that the car has mechanical problems over 750 and you sell the car green light and a dealer buys the car from you and when he realizes the car has mechanical issues, the repairs are under 750, like 500 bucks, you're in the clear. If uh, the repairs are over 750, then the dealer have the right to cancel the deal or you're going to have to pay to fix the car. So that is the 750 rule. So let's get that so you could understand where I'm going in that 750 rule. So what Trade Rev that did was they separated the invoice so that the body shop uh, broke down, you know, the bumper is 300, the repairs are 300, maybe the, um, uh, I think the uh, skirt was 250. So they gave a, a, a breakdown of what all the parts were. Trade Rev decided that they were going to pay for the, the bottom lip because clearly in the pictures it was there and the um, uh, and it did not show up with that so they want to pay that but then the damaged bumper is under 750 repairs uh, and because it's under 750 they're not going to pay to fix that so my argument with that is I'm trying to explain to the Trade Rev dumbass rep uh, well that is not the regular Trade Rev dumbass rep that is actually arbitration Rep, uh, a, a rep okay so arbitration is the guy who looks at all the evidence and make the decision judge jury executioner all of that fucking shit okay so he looks at it and then he says that um the bumper repair by itself is not is under 750 so they're not going to pay to fix it so like i try to explain uh it is basically the same damage because the guys damaged the lip on the car and they try to rip it out that's what pulled the bumper out of place Okay, so the total repairs, including the lip, is over 750. So if you want to use that 750 rule, it's not relevant there because the total damage is over 750. Now, I'm not saying the dealer did not disclose the bumper was damaged. If I was trying to claim that the dealer did not disclose this bumper damage and you say the bumper damage is under 750, I can agree with you on that, that, that finding. But the total claim was that I paid your company once again to deliver a car to me the car was damaged during transport and to cover the damage the guys just ripped out the, the the lip that was damaged causing further damage to the bumper now i have a shop i have common sense i understand how those um stuff work the bumper was not damaged by hitting it there's no scrapes there's no cracks on the bumper like somebody hit it it's because the skirt was broken the skirt is screwed up to the bottom of the bumper you try to rip the damaged skirt out it's going to break the bumper and uh, 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 the, the clips of the bumper that's exactly what happened and try to explain that to them and they just said the decision is final you get 250 go fuck yourself right so uh just so you know trade rev adessa those companies are not your friend uh they, they basically do not need your business they have enough dealers to keep them happy and unfortunately there is no regulating body or anything to really keep them in check it's like a fucking wild wild west they do whatever they want okay so keep that in mind and that's that's why when you get an upper hand on them because sometimes you do uh do not feel sorry for them do not feel like as if uh you know you owe them shit whenever you get an upper hand you take it and you run um so that's all i had to say uh if you stayed here till the end 
don't forget to drop a like on this video i know it's not our typical video but guess what we're gonna go for good and bad days together and uh if you learn anything from our bad days at least when it comes to you you know how to deal with it the bottom line is when this kind of shit happens i have lots of options i can keep fighting them but then it's gonna keep stressing me out and then distracting you from what matters, which is making money at your ex at your dealership, at your business. I can't spend half my day on the phone with Trader F all the time. I can hire a lawyer to look at it. Our lawyers cost anywhere from five to six hundred bucks an hour. Does it worth it to put a lawyer on that? No. So, uh, whenever situations like that, unfortunately, it's like you just have to cut your losses and move on. Okay. So anyway, that's what that is about. So uh, thanks for watching. If you stay till the end. And don't forget to pop a like, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.